In this video, we'll talk about a second service. We'll have a look at the usage of namespaces and the using directive. And also we'll talk about the differences of services and entities. So let's go on and create a second service. We could either define it in the already existing catalog service CDS file, but we'll create a new file called stat service CDS for a dedicated service. The service itself is rather simple. It protects the orders entity coming from the schema CDS file and exposes it as a entity called order info. We exclude certain fields like the fields coming from the managed aspect, but also you want to exclude information about the book entity. The service itself is read only because it's only showing the statistics of our orders amount. As you can already see, I copied over the definition of the service and the orders entity couldn't be resolved. No artifact has been found with name my. Why is that? Cause it's a in the schema CDS, which we haven't referenced. So let's go on and do that similarly as we had it in the catalog service CDS. And now we can use my dot orders to reference and import the orders entity. So let's have a closer look at what those namespaces actually are. There's a section in the cap documentation under CDS, definition language, and we have two sections which are interesting for us. One is the namespaces and the other one is the importing directives. Let's have a look at what the namespace actually is. So to prefix the names of all subsequent definitions, place the namespace directive at the top of a model. This is comparable to other languages like Java. So all entities below a namespace will get prefixed with foo.bar. And in the comment, you can see what that resolves to. So the entity foo is actually foo.bar.entity name. And the same applies to the entity bar here. So foo.bar, which is namespace, and then the entity name. Additionally, how can we use those namespaces from other models? Let's go back to the section in the table of contents. There's the importing directive or the using directive. Let's just go through quickly and read what's there. So using directives allows to import definitions from other CDS models. Let's have a look at how that looks like in our model. So using allows to use it from the DB schema dot CDS. The dot CDS is implicitly added by cap in the compiling phase. As shown on line three below, you can specify aliases to be used subsequently. Using namespace as new namespace from the actual file. So let's have a look at our definition as also alias, which is my in this case. Might be a little confusing because my is also part of the referenced namespace coming from the db schema.cds. CDS is implicitly added by the cap compiler. But to make it more clear, let's change that to stats orders and the actual namespace isn't referenced here anymore. What's also pretty interesting is that we don't need a alias necessarily. So let's remove that part. And for sure, the entity can now not be referenced anymore. Therefore, let's have a look how we can reference it now. If we say my.bookshop that orders and use the CDS CLI to compile our service document. To SQL, for example, we'll get an error that the artifact my hasn't been found. 
So let's go back to the documentation to have a look how the using directive works actually. If we have a look at, for example, the second line here means that foo.bar.scope.nested is imported. But then you need to specify the last bit or the last prefix of the namespace still to reference the actual entity. Could be without an alias, second line, or if you define an alias, as is like we have already seen it. So let's have a look. Using my bookshop means that we don't need the first prefix, my, because the last bit of the namespace is already made available. And if we do that thingy once again, we can see that the compilation works now. Or if we remove the bookshop part from the using directive, we need to add the last bit of the imported prefix also when we want to reference the entity. So let's go on and see how the metadata of the new service looks like. Therefore, we start the server with CDS watch. Open the UI and have a look at the new service. There's the metadata document and we'll only see two fields because we've excluded all the other fields explicitly from the service. So let's just try out if we remove those statements here, what it means to our metadata document. As you can see in a second, if I save the file, the server will restart automatically because CDS Watch is monitoring CDS files. So once there are changes, the application will restart. And those fields should now be added again to our service definition. As you can see, there's not only the properties, which we didn't have before, but also the annotations coming from the managed aspect. Let's just add that in again and see the difference of services. We are in both services projecting the orders entity from the schema CDS file. So let's go over to the meta document once again and see that we excluded the fields once again and also the annotations from the manage aspects are gone. If we go over to the catalog service and compare the underlying entity, which is orders coming from the schema CDS, you'll see that the entity still have the property cause doesn't exclude the fields coming from the manager aspects. It's just a plain protection on the underlying entity. So it's interesting to know how services and entities are working at the end of the day. So for that, let's stop the server and use the CDS compiler to compile that whole service definition to a SQL statement. CDS compile and the definition of the stat service, which is contained in the stat service CDS file and give a target, which is SQL. And as you can see, we have imported all the entities from the schema CDS file. So the offers, books and orders with the full list of fields. But the service itself only gives out the ID of the order and the quantity of the order because of the excluding statement in the stat service CDS file. So an entity resolves to a table and a service definition resolves to a view on the database level. And a CDS deploy will bring those statements done to the database itself. If we check the SQL tools, we can see the equivalence as well. So if we refresh 
everything in here. We can see stats.orderInfo view definition and it's bringing up only ID and quantity while the catalog service dot orders view has information about the managed aspect. So created at, created by, modified at, and modified by, plus the book ID, which we excluded here. But basically we only have three tables storing the information exposed by different views. So what we haven't done until now, we haven't actually tested our new service. Therefore, let's create a new file to send requests to our service, which is the orders HTTP. And I copied a couple of requests. So let's have a look at the requests. We have a get request, so a OData query using the stats service. And we have some post requests sending data or data creates using the catalog service, but the orders entity. Why is that? Because we've defined in our stats service that the order info entity is read only, so we can't use that one. But the catalog service has a orders entity, which is also insertable. We'll send different requests, inserting some orders for a book ID with a certain quantity. For that, let's start our server and see if we already have some order infos. And as you can see, we don't have any data yet. So let's insert some of the orders. That went fine, 201 created. I went also fine, 201 and created, and the last one should also be fine. As you can see, we do have all the fields in here, but we should only get the ID and quantity from the stats endpoint. Perfectly fine, we see three entries, but only the fields we have exposed using the stats service. That's it, how to expose the same entities using different services, how to use namespaces and the using directive. Thanks for watching.